My name is Kevin Wanless, service technician, road technician. Been with Greenmark 14 years and with John Deere as a service technician for 22 years. Hello, my name is Keith Coates, service technician for Greenmark Equipment. Been with the company 25 years. Conveyor chain, you want to make sure your conveyor chain is properly adjusted. In this example, we know this chain has skipped a tooth because it's unlevel at the front end. So by keeping your conveyor chain nice and tight, that'll prevent this from jumping a cog when you go to reverse and get that slug out of the feeder house. So two different ways that we can adjust it depending on your machine. The first setup, I should say the later setup, is a spring-loaded adjuster that came on the later and the current machines. And you just have to run that washer down until it's even with that adjustment gauge. Moving on to the right hand side here, you've got to make sure your, your drive chain for the feeder house is adjusted properly. Depending on your speed of your feeder house, you can adjust the chain to get the lower or the upper sprocket and then move your adjuster here to make sure this chain is nice and tight, properly adjusted chain. When this is nice and tight, you should be able to slop that chain back and forth on that sprocket. So what we're going to work on do here is adjust the feeder house drive belt. Uh, the importance is to keep the maintain the shiv gap in the front, and that's going to keep the proper tension on the drive belt to keep it from slipping. The one thing you want to do is try to keep this belt as flat as possible as you're adjusting it. To achieve that, there are adjustments in the rear for the upper drive belt. You can loosen the bolt, turn the turnbuckle here. That will lengthen this belt out so you have minimal arch in the belt. In the end, you want one eighth gap between the shivs and that will maintain the pressure against the belt to keep it from slipping. So on the variable speed feeder house drive, the intermediate drive or the upper drive we call it, it's kind of prone for wear. Um, there is two grease cirques and we've got this on this new unit here because for ease of showing. To grease this hub, this is a daily grease. So what it is, is you're greasing these drive cogs in the upper shiv, and this locks the, the back shiv and the top and the outer shiv together. So this drive cog and this hub are mated together through here, and then they drive. So what happens is in the larger heads, uh, they have a tendency to, to wear and then the outer shiv will spin freely and then you'll lose traction on the on the drive belt. At that point in time you need to repair the, the, the shiv, the drive belt. Here are examples of the worn parts that can happen to your combine due to lack of grease. You can see that the cogs on the inner hub are gone and the cogs on the outer belt on the outer pulley are also missing. Um, this can be prevented by greasing more often daily um, it's not a fun grease to get to, but it is something very important to take care of. Here is a shot on the combine where the grease cirques are located for the upper drive shiv. Um, they are up behind. You rotate the belt in the correct position and you kind of go up and feel, and then that's where your two grease cirques are. Reverser. No matter what reverser you have on your different machine, we suggest using this heavy duty 460 reverser oil. Uh, it has a, a lot of good thickness to it, dissipates the heat, and saves the life of your reverser. Depending on what machine you have, you have four different options of reversers. This is the five-speed heavy-duty reverser. It comes on the five-speed hydraulic change to speed feeder house. This is the extreme-duty reverser, larger pulley than the heavy-duty. Faceplate here has a different setup, so this is a good indication how it's different from the standard or the heavy-duty. Uh, you've got different faceplate, different plate on the front, a good indication of what you're looking at. This is the heavy-duty reverser. The difference of the reverser here is the front plate is an indication that it's a heavy duty. The heavy duty is the option of option up of the standard. The heavy duty was a uh, heavier, larger reverser to handle the heavier, larger crop on the larger heads, 30 foot, 35 foot platforms, or the 12 row corn heads. Gave you a more aggressive bite to hold the belt and get a better pull to operate that larger head. This is the standard reverser. Standard reverser had a smaller pulley diameter, didn't have quite the aggressive bite for the larger heads, so that's why you have the option of the heavy duty reverser on these machines. Refer to your machine to see what pulley or what reverser you have to get proper parts as needed.